Look at the snow on the hill. It's gorgeous. I want to go up that hill and sledge down. I could use you as a sledge, couldn't I? Just put a, like a bin bag underneath you and I could ride you all the way down the hill. <laughs> That'd be ace, wouldn't it, that? Uh, hello, good morning and welcome to the secret lock. So, are you all right? So, I have a question for you. Oh, for me? Yeah, are you a city boy or a silly old country boy? A silly old country boy. Are you? Yes. <laughs> do you prefer the city or do you prefer the country? I like a bit of both. I like the countryside because I like the peace and quiet. But then I like to go into the city because I like a bit of civilization. Yeah, just to get cafes and shops. Well, and that's get it, back yeah. out again. Yeah, a bit of Starbucks and super dry. You have a, they'll be writing in. Oh, you don't want Starbucks. Don't Starbucks want super dry. Like... What's wrong with Matalan? <laughs> <laughs> Last week, <laughs> we showed you our top five places to visit if you want a bit of peace and quiet. Yes. This week. We're going to do the opposite. For some mayhem. We're not going to show you five places in the countryside. We're going to show you our top five favourite cities yes. to visit by narrowboat. Let's crack straight on then with number five, and that is Manchester. Who'd have thunk it? Who'd have thunk it? We've been to Manchester many times though, but never by boat. Well, once by once boat. Once by boat. <laughs> that would have been funnier. We've never been there and it's our number five favourite city. I know what I meant. To visit by narrowboat. Now, the good thing about Manchester is you can actually get into Manchester uh, if you've got a wide beam boat, which was a question last week about some of the narrow canals. Yes. Manchester's a bit of a funny place by boat because there's a few dodgy areas, but it is a nice place to go. Yeah. Now, we came in from the east side of Manchester, down the Ashton Canal, and went down into Castlefield Basin. You can also come into Manchester via the Rochdale Canal, which comes the same way, or you can come in from the west side from the Bridgewater Canal. We came in from the east, and we moored overnight the night before at Thomas Telford Basin, which is a really nice, quiet place. It was lovely. It's private, it's gated, you don't get people really walking around your boat. And there's only enough room for three boats. Yeah, so it's never going to be that busy. It is one of the better places to moor in Manchester, because there are some dodgy places, yeah. and Castlefield Basin down at the bottom can get quite busy, especially yeah. in the summer season. Now, to get into Castlefield from the top, you have to go from Piccadilly, down the Rochdale Nine. And that, this is the... Hard if, work. If, yeah, if there was pros and cons to Manchester, this is definitely a con, isn't it? Yes. Rochdale Nine are a set of nine locks that take you from Piccadilly Basin at Dale Street down to Castlefield Basin at the bottom, onto the Bridgewater Canal. Yeah. And they have got a reputation. They are quite infamous. Yes. For a few reasons. One, the hard work. So if you're on your own, we really wouldn't recommend doing the Rochdale Nine as a solo boater. Definitely not. Number two, they have a reputation for, well, breaking down, being vandalised, not working in general. And it's a little bit of a dingy area. It is. You've got to be very careful. There's some uh, not so social activities go on sometimes under there. Yes. So again, if, especially if you're taking kids, just be careful. Even hypodermic needles. That are hidden in the mechanisms of the locks. So it can be a bit grim. But be careful, and it's all right. It was fine when we went yeah. down, but you do hear stories. Yeah. There can often be too much water going down the locks or not enough water going down the locks. <laughs> so it's good to check with the Canal and River Trust on their website on the notices to make sure that all the locks are open and you can get down there. Those are the cons. There's a lot of pros. Yes. You see a lot of Manchester just by descending or ascending the locks. You've got Canal Street, which is... The famous Canal Street. It's a piece of living social history. It's the gay ca party capital. Of it's the gay capital of the north. <laughs> it is amazing. And the atmosphere in the summer is just brilliant down party there. Party town. Sackville Gardens, where you've got the memorials to HIV AIDS victims, to transgender people who have died. And also the Alan Turing Memorial is sat there with his apple. You go through Deansgate, where you've got all the restaurants and bars and shops. And then you go down past Beetham Tower to the bottom lock and down into Castlefield Basin. Our number four is a bit of a wild card. It is. It's Edinburgh. 
and it's gorgeous. It is really nice, and it's the, one of the most recent places that we've visited by boat. It's on the Union Canal, which is not connected to the English Canal Network, so you can't get to Edinburgh from the English canals. You have to rent a boat from... Falkirk. Yeah, Falkirk, near the Falkirk Wheel. There's two higher boat bases there, and it means that you get a day coming up the Falkirk Wheel. It takes about two days, two leisurely six-hour days to get to Edinburgh, and once you're there, there's plenty of mooring in the city. Uh, it's right next to this like a shops and restaurants, isn't it? It's like a shopping centre and cinema and restaurants, everything. Just look for the moorings by Leamington Lift Bridge. You can't miss it because you can't get through it. <laughs> so you just moor before dead it. End. Behind it is Edinburgh Quay. And they used to hold the boating festival there up until uh, Covid. But this year, 2022, is the... See if I can get this word right. I struggle with some words. Bicentin Bicentenary. Bicentenary? It's, Bicentenary? it's the canal's 200th birthday. So there's lots of activities planned. Chances are that you're probably going to see something going on if you're visiting the Union Canal this year. Number three is a bit special for us. Our home city. And it's Leeds. It's, it's where we met 30 years ago. Oh my goodness. 30 years. Wow. He rescued me from that well you'll know the story if you watch our vlogs you rescued me from that. he's still got them gold pants from the from the dancing cage <laughs> there <laughs> no, i was no. greased up like a pig in treks none of it's true busting my moves <laughs> for that mp do you remember none of it's true he went on to become a prime minister actually oh. <laughs> there you go so it, it does <laughs> it is a very special place for us is leeds and the good thing about it is it's good if you're hiring a boat further up the Air Valley towards Skipton. If you get in a week's holiday, you can come down from Skipton for three days, yeah. see the Bingley Five Rise and Salt Air, Salts Mill, uh, come down the uh, staircase locks into Leeds City Centre. You could spend a day and a night in Leeds and then go back up to Skipton. And that's a really nice week's holiday, isn't it? It's a good it? trip, that. Busy, lots of locks, lots of swing bridges and lots of things to see. Now you moor right at the end of the Leeds and Liverpool Canal by lock number one in Granary Wharf. Yes. Now the great thing about Granary Wharf is it's very, you can't get more central into Leeds. It's literally right next to the railway station. So it's trains all the time. Every 12 seconds all yes. the night. <laughs> Sean got sick of it. Uh, but the other good thing is it's right in the city centre. It's literally a couple of minutes walk yeah. from the city centre and there's lots of bars and restaurants about. Now you might, if your hire boat company allows it, be able to drop down from Lock 1 onto the River Air, the Air and Calder navigation. But check. That will take you down towards Castleford and a junction with the River Calder. Now you can go a few ways from there. You could go down to Sheffield and the Chesterfield Canal or you could turn right and go up towards the Rochdale and the Huddersfield Canals. Picking a number one and a number two was really tough mm. and there was that much between them. How much? That much. <laughs> but number two is Birmingham. Yes. We love Birmingham. Birmingham's a very special place for us because it's the first city we visited by narrowboat. On nearly, a higher boat. Nearly 20 years ago. Yeah. Wow. It's amazing. And the other good thing about Birmingham is it's, it's like the canal capital of Britain. Yes. There's 35 miles of canal just in Birmingham. There used to be 160. That's more than Venice, I think. Yeah, Venice has got 26 miles, so it's actually got more canal than Venice. Wow. It doesn't flood as often either. Oh, we do. <laughs> <laughs> now, we moor at Sheepcoach Street Moorings, which is near the Exhibition Centre, the, the big Lego shop. Opposite Legoland. And the Sea Life Centre. We moor there because it's a little bit quieter. There's it's not a, as many bars and restaurants. It's away from the bars, isn't it? And you don't get as many people passing the boat. You could moor around the corner at Gas Street Basin, you've heard of that, Regency Wharf. That does get quite busy, as does the mailbox, which is a little bit further around. And that's just because there's more bars and restaurants and people on the towpath, which can get a little bit noisy and sometimes a little bit leery, especially on a weekend and in the height of summer. But if you like the hustle and bustle, it's fine. Yeah, we just moor a little bit further around the corner, just so it's a bit more peaceful. Yeah. It's also only five minutes walk into the city centre and to New Street Station, so the shops are on your doorstep. I think the reason we like Birmingham is it was the first city we visited. Yes, but it was. It just has this vibrancy to it. It just feels like an exciting, nice place to visit. Yeah. And we've never had a bad experience because people talk about, oh, don't visit Birmingham, it's grubby and this and your boat will get vandalised. We've never seen no. that. We've never seen any friends experiencing that. No. It can be a little bit different just outside the city centre as you're coming in or out of the city. So it might be worth coming in 
in one visit and not just mooring outside. That's right, yeah. Well, I apart so. from that, we really recommend Birmingham as a brilliant place to visit. So what is our number one city to visit by narrowboats? Yeah, I bet you've guessed. It is Liverpool. Oh, we absolutely love Liverpool. <laughs> and it, it, it was really close, Liverpool and Birmingham, wasn't it? It was. But Liverpool clinched it. Now, we first visited Liverpool on our boat in 2019. It was the first place we visited. On Silver Fox. On Silver Fox. It was. We came down the Liverpool link, which is quite new itself. And that takes you through all the old docks. And it brings you right into the centre of Liverpool, past the museum, past the Liver building, into Albert Dock, and then into Salthouse Dock, which is where the Canal and River Trust visitor moorings are. Now, if you're coming down into Salthouse Dock, you do need to book a mooring in advance, which you can do online. Otherwise you won't even get through the locks. And they'll give you a numbered pontoon that you moor up. And the great thing is you get free electricity and water on every single mooring. <laughs> Stay there all year. <laughs> plug, your, plug your immersion heater in and you're all right, aren't you? There's loads to see. From Salthouse Dock, you can see the whole of Albert Dock, which is full of shops and restaurants and bars. And you've got Canning Dock at the other side of us, which is where Sean met his bit of fluff, didn't you? bit of fluff? You met your bit of fluff. Did I? Yeah, Jeff. Oh, God. Jeff Brazier. Oh. 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 He went all moist, didn't you? He went all misty. See, you see, he's trying to embarrass me and it's not working. He got a, he got a bit misty down there, didn't you? <sighs> see, he just talks rubbish. So what do you think about when you hear the name Liverpool? The Liver Building and the Liver Birds. Which you can see from Salt House Dock. Yeah, this is the Beatles. Yeah, the shopping is literally over the road, two minutes walk away. Uh, Liverpool won a big shopping centre there. There's just like hundreds of bars and restaurants to choose from. And the moorings at Salt House Dock are private. They're all gated and away from the footpath. So you don't get anybody, apart from other boat owners and holidaymakers, walking past your boat it is very very safe if not a bit noisy because it's right outside the police headquarters as well yeah. isn't it but because you're quite low down that wall it hides a lot of the noise so don't fly your drone above it like i did mm, yeah <laughs> So they are our top five cities to visit by narrowboat or wide beam, if it'll fit. You it won't, won't get, fit in Birmingham. You won't get a wide beam through Gas Street Basin, I'll tell you that. Well, I've put links to each of the cities. Uh, they should have appeared up above Sean's head. They're going to be down in the video description, if they're not. And if you want advice uh, on uh, holidays there, just contact the hire companies. There's yeah. loads of hire boat companies across the UK and they will give you loads of information on uh, boating in cities and in countryside as well. Yeah. I like talking. I like it. I kind of get excited thinking We know about you like talking. Birmingham and Liverpool and that. It's nice, yes. isn't it? It's nice to get, it's nice to be out in the countryside like this for peace and quiet. But then it is nice to go back into civilization and, and into the city. But then again, it's nice to come back out again afterwards, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Am I talking too much? No. I'm just excited. <laughs> uh, we hope you've enjoyed this vlog and you found it useful. Uh, if you've got any other recommendations for cities and big towns, places where there's lots of hustle and bustle that we've not mentioned, uh, just drop them in the comments. Don't say we've missed it. Because no, we haven't. This is our, our top five favourites. Yeah. So, uh, if you want to share yours. Yeah, share your favourites in the comments section and uh, let everybody else see them as well. We hope you've enjoyed this episode. If you have and you're not already, please subscribe to the channel for more of it. More of this rubbish. Hit the thumbs up button. And if you hit the notification bell, YouTube will let you know every time we release a new episode, which is, you, answered, you didn't say it last week. I've forgotten when it is. When is it? Oh, it's four o'clock on a Friday. In the UK. Uh, if you want to help support the channel and keep us going, you can become a member of YouTube channel or you can join as a Patreon member. Uh, details are down in the video description. Are we done? I'm, do I'm going blind with this sun. We, we got all wrapped up because of the snow and the sun is shining. It's beautiful. It's today. warm. And it's actually quite warm. <laughs> right, we'll see you next time. Take care of yourself. Bye-bye. ta -ra. Three, two, what's up? Have I got bogeys? Woohoo! Morton, oh, yeah. Oh, ah, three. Just going to do that again. Two, what? Hello. Manchester's... <coughs> What's number four?
I've forgotten. I've seen the list, but I've forgotten. The thing that surprised us. Oh. Thirty years. Oh. <laughs> if yeah. you more. I forgot. Number one. And there's Silla Black. Silla Black. Stan Boardman. Stan. Yeah. Is he still going? Playlists for each of the. Of the uh, Shall I do that one again? I think we'll do that one again and hurry up before I go blind. Three, 